Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Eli Dobri Tech. I know it's been a while since I've done a diagnostic video. I'm here working on a 2006 Cadillac DTS with a 4.6 liter engine. Customer complained that the vehicle has a check engine light and is also due for a smoke check. So he wants me to diagnose what's causing this check engine light to be on. So first things first, I got the scan tool already hooked up. I'm using the OTC Encore. So I'm gonna select vehicle, auto ID, 2006 Cadillac DTS. Recycle the ignition. So first step is to go ahead and read the codes for the engine control module. Alright, so it shows that there's one current code, which is a P0446 evaporative, evaporative, evaporative emission vent system performance. And it shows a history code, which is a P2803, a heated oxygen sensor circuit closed loop performance bank 2 sensor 1. And it has fail sense clear. There's about four of them a P0153, a P0154, and a P0496, and a P1153. Pretty much uh, these codes indicate a EVAP system problem and an O2 sensor, which is bank 2 sensor 1. But the one that's currently showing as the current code is uh, P0446, so that's the code that I'm going to diagnose first. So for those that are familiar with uh, GM's uh, EVAP systems, you know, you know this should be a piece of cake. These systems are easy to di to pretty much diagnose. GM has made it easy to verify potential problems. So I'm gonna go ahead, go to data stream. I'm going to go ahead and select the EVAP data, customize. I'm going to select anywhere from three or four pits. I'm going to show you guys you know, which ones are the ones to pretty much check. It's the, uh, the EVAP purge solenoid command. This was not really necessary with the Keon engine off, but you know, I'm going to go ahead and select it. The other one will be the uh, fuel tank pressure sensor voltage and inches of water. So I'm going to select the other one as well. Also the EVAP vent solenoid command. So I guess I bypassed the other one, which is right here. I'm going to hit apply. All right, guys. So with the Keon engine off. Our fuel tank pressure sensor showing about 6.25 inches of water which is currently showing which is pretty much high a normal spec for this GM vehicle should be close to zero inches of water fuel tank pressure sensor voltage shows about 0 0.0.24 volts which is very low normal spec for the GM vehicles anywhere from 1.4 1.6 usually 1.5 our event vent solenoid command shows venting our EVAP per cylinder command shows 0% since the vehicle is not even on. It's going to be showing 0. So the next step, I'm going to turn the vehicle on. To see if we see any uh, fluctuations with the fuel tank pressure sensor. I'm revving the engine. No fluctuations. So for this potential problem, you know, you could do two things. Step number one is to go ahead and remove the fuel cap and see if these numbers for your fuel tank pressure sensor fluctuate. Either go close to zero inches of water and this 0.24 volts should pretty much go back to normal around 1.5, between 1.4, 1.6. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fuel cap 
for you guys. All right, so the fuel cap is removed. I could actually smell the fuel vapors, you know, coming out of the, the fuel neck. So now let's go back to the scan tool and verify if there's any fluctuations. So with the fuel cap removed, we're still stuck at 6.25 inches of water. This number should actually be going close to zero inches to atmospheric pressure. Our voltage still stuck at 0 0.24, uh, 2, 0 0.24 volts. So this is most likely a fuel tank pressure sensor problem. Since our numbers did not fluctuate at all. So the second step I'm gonna perform for you guys is the functional test by doing a purge and seal command. So let me set up and I'll show you. All right guys, so to perform this special test on this Encore, go to special test, select engine, engine controls, and then look for the EVAP system. And then look for the uh, evap perch seal. Oops, I selected the wrong one. I'm gonna exit. All right. And this uh, should be done with the vehicle on. I'm gonna select continue. I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, the pits once again. I'm gonna select this time you know, i'm going to select actually the fuel trims the short-term fuel trims to show you that once i purge the system our fuel trim should go negative so evap vent command evap perch command uh this was not really necessary fuel tank pressure sensor both of them and our short-term fuel trims bank one bank two So, so far, our vent command still shows venting. Our pressure sensor still shows 0 0.24 volts and 6.25 inches of water. Short term right now, fluctuating anywhere from negative one, positive 2%. So I, as I start the test and I increase the uh, purge, our short term on bank one, bank two should go negative. So here we go. I actually heard the uh, vent solenoid click as I hit the start button, which is a good indication that our vent solenoid is perhaps working properly. I'm gonna go ahead and hit increase to about 50%, 60. So at 20%, our short term is still we're on positive. Now it's starting to go negative. 30%. Keep climbing negative. I'm gonna go ahead and check the bank two. It also shows negative. I'm gonna probably go up to 50%. At this moment, the, the vehicle does seem to be running a little bit rough. Now the next step is to hit system seal, and the vehicle should run a little bit more rough as you seal the system. All right. So we saw that our short term was at negative 37. Now it's slowly going back to normal. But the most important key factor here is a fuel tank pressure sensor. These numbers are not doing anything. They're still stuck at 6.25 and 0 0.24. So like I mentioned this, uh, as you increase the, uh, the purge, this number should go actually negative. Negative, I mean the uh, inches of water should go negative and our fuel tank pressure sensor voltage should actually go up as you increase the purge and then slowly decay back to normal. Since nothing's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and exit the test. I heard the vent cylinder click again as I did the exit. So that pretty much leaves us that our culprit problem is gonna end up being a fuel tank pressure sensor. It's causing this P0446. So the next step is to go out there and do performance on voltage checks to see if we have any problems with the harness. So here we go.
All right guys, so this is where the uh, fuel tank pressure sensor lives. This is where you see that Y connector. It's a three wire. This pretty much lives on top of the fuel tank. You must remove this uh, plate cover, which is has like five screws, I think, and they're uh, seven millimeters. All right, so I'll be using a uh, LED test light and I'll be using a, a jumper wire already which is already connected to uh, positive battery and negative battery and I got the test light you know connected to the negative uh, jumper wire so I'll be checking the uh, 5 volt reference and then I'll be checking the ground and the third wire is going to be the signal alright so Let me set up and I'll show you guys. Alright guys, so with the key on engine off, with the test light connected to battery negative, I'm going to jump, actually not jump, I'm going to front probe pin number C, which is the one on your right. The middle one usually is always a signal, and the one on your left will be your, your low reference voltage, which would be your ground. So, like I said, I'm going to front probe carefully the, the pin and we should see about 5 volts it shows about 4.8 which is close to 5 volts which is good so next I'm going to connect the test light to battery positive and check for a ground alright guys so with the test light connected to battery positive I'm gonna front probe to pin number A I mean pin A which is our, our low reference our test light should turn green so here we go so it shows negative 12 which is a good ground like I mentioned the middle one's gonna be our signal if I touch it there's you know you know there's nothing going on so that just verifies that we have a potential good ground and a good uh, 5 volt reference and there's one more test left. I'm gonna actually jump the signal wire, which is pin B, to the 5 volt reference. And that zero condition that we had in our voltage, on our tank pressure sensor, should actually go approximately 5 volts. So let me set up and I'll show you guys. All right guys, so before I jump, uh, the signal wire to the to our 5 volt reference I want to show you guys the uh, scan data showing you guys the voltage for the frame uh, for the fuel tank pressure sensor and the uh, fuel tank pressure sensor inches of water by unplugging the sensor our voltage did drop to zero so that just verifies that that our problem was the fuel tank pressure sensor was actually holding the voltage to 0 0.24 instead of 1.5 and our inches of water actually dropped to 0 0.96. All right, so next thing is to jump the signal wire to, to our five volt reference and this voltage should jump, climb to about five volts. So let me set up and I'll show you. All right guys, so I have my jumper wire already. I'll be using a simple jumper wire. So like I said, I'll be jumping pin number B with pin C which is the middle wire which is our signal and pin C which is the one on the right make sure and be careful not to jump pin A to pin C or, or else you will fry the computer so here you go so the next step is to go to the scan tool and watch our um, voltage that voltage should climb to vi approximately 5 volts so let me show you all right guys so this is with the key on engine off this test must be done with the key on engine off our fuel tank pressure sensor voltage did go to 5 volts so that just verifies our cir circuit integrity that there's no opens or shorts to ground and our fuel tank pressure sensor inches of water actually did drop to negative 0 0.4.3 that's actually like the normal spec for the GM vehicles all right so the next step is just to go ahead and replace the, the fuel tank pressure sensor and to verify the fix
All right. So this is the uh, fuel pre uh, fuel tank pressure sensor. It's actually a Duralast brand. Just as a, as a side note, if you ever replace these uh, fuel tank pressure sensors on these GM vehicles, make sure to get the original, which is the AC Delco. The customer opted to go with the aftermarket with the Duralast. But this is, you know, this is the part number, SU1390. And this is the part. It's a three pin. Alrighty. Alright guys, so with the newly installed fuel tank pressure sensor, with the key on engine off, these are our newly numbers now. We see that our fuel tank pressure sensor inches of water did drop to close to atmospheric pressure, which is close to zero. We're now showing negative 0.37 inches of water. Our voltage did go back to 1.55, which is within that spec of 1.4, 1.6, which is for GMs. Our vent solenoid command shows venting. Before, before with the faulty pressure sensor, our inches of water was close to six inches. Our voltage was around 0.24, so that shows that the sensor was bringing down that voltage to nearly zero. All right, so the final step for this fix is to perform the special test, the EVAP perch and seal. I'm going to select the date again. I'm going to select EVAP vent, EVAP perch, and vent solenoid. Both of our fuel tank pressure sensor pids. And that's about it. I'm going to go back. I actually selected an extra one. All right, so these are the four pits I want to show you guys. The EVAP perch cylinder command, the EVAP van cylinder command, the fuel tank pressure sensor voltage, and the inches of water. So I'm gonna start the engine for you guys. Right now the EVAP vent cylinder is showing venting. All right, so right now with the, with the engine at idle, our voltage shows about 1.55. Our inches of water shows about negative 0 0.37, which are which are within that with GM spec. All right, so next step is to start the special function. So our vent command went to not venting, so that's gonna close the vent. So now I'm gonna purge the system by increasing the uh, percentage to make about 30%, 10, 20, 30, I'm gonna hit system seal. So as I increase the uh, the purge, our inches of water should go to negative, our voltage should go up, and once you hit the system seal, these numbers should decay slowly back to their norm, uh, normal specs. So slowly this number should go back to 1.5, approximately 1.5. This number slowly should go back to atmospheric pressure which is about zero inches of water I'm gonna show you guys real quick all these numbers start decaying slowly but surely sometimes you know when you perform this test I think if you go above ne about negative seven or negative eight inches of water the system will kick you out so instead of showing not venting, it's gonna go back to venting and, and then these numbers are gonna drop quickly. So I'm gonna perform that test one more time and show you guys if you pass those numbers, it's gonna kick you out about to 40%. Uh, hit system seal. As you see there, it went back to venting it kicked me out. These numbers are actually dropping. So 
So I think anything less than seven, you're good. We'll do it one more time. System seal. Like I said, these numbers should start decaying slowly. As long as the system doesn't kick us out. Still shows not venting. So that just uh, verifies that the system is a fix. I don't see no more problems with the potential EVAP vent solenoid or an EVAP per solenoid. We do know that the EVAP personal is working properly since our fuel chimps did show negative with the faulty sensor. So that just was showing you that the system was uh, sucking in fuel vapors, which was driving our fuel trims negative, both bank one, bank two. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys learned something on how to uh, Diagnose is uh, EVAP systems on these GM vehicles. It's fairly easy. Pretty much, if you know, if you know, you know what you're looking for. You know what your scan data. All right, guys. So this is Eli Dobity Tech. Subscribe if you like.